Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. So today, I have an Energizer flashlight for you. Now, I get it. When it comes to batteries, brands like Energizer, Duracell, Rayovac, yeah, they're they're great for batteries, but if you need a flashlight, those are probably at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to brand names. And I'll admit, when it comes to Duracell's flashlight offerings, yeah, it's, it's just best to avoid those altogether. Yeah, I haven't seen anything remotely impressive from Duracell. I saw one handheld model over a decade ago and that's been discontinued. But Energizer surprisingly does a good job when it comes to their flashlight offerings and this is one of them. Now this Energizer 85 lumen cap light is not part of their hard case pro line of lights. Those are actually quite good. This is part of Energizer's standard line. Now the reason why I picked this guy up is because I wanted something that was useful as not just a cap light for clipping to the brim of a baseball cap for use as an improvised headlamp, but I also wanted something that could be used as a loner light and as a secondary small general purpose light. Now, the problem with most cap lights is that they're designed specifically just to be a cap light. Can you hold one in your hand and use it that way? Sure. Is it ideal? Not really. And some of those cap lights can be surprisingly expensive with just a ton of lumens that you really don't need if you're using something up close, which is what you're going to be doing with most cap lights. So you really don't need something that puts out a staggering amount of output. What I like about this cap light is that it works well as a cap light and the highest lumen output is 85 lumens. So you do get a really good amount of light if you need it up close. But there are lower modes. Let's take a closer look. Now this is a 2 AAA flashlight and you load the batteries from here. Now this is one negative about the light. In the closed position, this thing is a headache and a half to pry open. And that's definitely what you'll be doing, prying it open to get to the batteries in order to put in new batteries, swap out old ones, put in a fresh set. Now. According to Energizer, this light is only rated for two AAA alkalines. Can you use rechargeables? Probably. But just to let you guys know, Energizer rates this light only for alkalines. So you get the light, you pry open the door on the back, 
and let's pretend I just did that. And this is just plastic, so that's going to get buggered up if you use this a lot and you're constantly opening and closing this little hatch. So let's open it up. And it does come with two AAA Energizer batteries, minus and positive, which means when you insert the batteries, what's on top should match. For example, positive to positive, negative to negative. Make sure it matches, guys. And keep in mind, these are an indication of what should be on top after you've inserted the batteries. So you've put them in there. Now, here, here is another issue. There is no O-ring. No O-ring at all. So this is not very water resistant at all. As a matter of fact, this flashlight with this door closed down tight is only rated for light splashes of water, meaning maybe you're outside and there is an extremely, extremely light rain falling. It would be good for that. Anything else? Nope. Energizer did not put any type of O-ring seal for the battery compartment. So yeah, that's a negative. And yes, they do make O-rings out there for battery compartments which are oval shaped. I mean, Phoenix has no problem finding O-rings or making O-rings or buying O-rings from other companies for their flashlights with elongated battery compartments. Energizer, yeah, you don't get an O-ring seal. Sorry, guys. Let's just shut that down. Okay. So at least there's a nice audible click. This light isn't flimsy. It's very lightweight, but it's not flimsy. Now this portion here that looks like it's rubberized checkering, nope, that's just plastic. But the diamond checkering on there is cut deep. This will give you a good purchase on your thumb once you've switched the light on and you want to hold it in your hand. I mean, it's definitely long enough that it easily fulfills that secondary need of being a good backup general purpose light or a loner light that you would hand to someone. So this plastic diamond checkering, nice and deeply cut, but it's not rubberized. Now here's the switch that is rubberized, hard rubber, very hard rubber and it definitely protrudes up from the light quite a bit. I know some people won't like that, but just to let you know, it does protrude quite a bit. Double barrel design. One side is a red LED at about 30 lumens, maybe less. I wasn't able to confirm that. The other side, you get 30 lumens, white output, and also 85 lumens on high. This thing has no memory feature. It's always the same. One click will get you red. Second click 30 lumens white, and yeah, I'm not doing it fast enough. 
You have to do this quickly. You will always get the red first, the low white second, and the high 85 lumens white third. But you have to click quickly. And I wasn't doing that, so let's do it quickly. There's the red, there's the white, there's the high white. Now, it's impossible for both barrels to be on at the same time. So please keep that in mind. And it's always, always the same output levels, no memory feature. And of course, if you click it on and you leave it on for quite a while without clicking it again, the next click will always switch it off. You do have to click quickly to get to the output you want. Three modes works well. Yep. Rest of the body also plastic. It doesn't feel like high quality plastic, but I mean, this is one of the lower priced cap lights out there. Here's the clip for the brim of your cap, and it is adjustable. When you have this clipped to the brim of your cap, you can raise up the back portion, which lowers the front. And there are several, well, there are several stops. There's the first one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm not stopping. So there's the first one. And you can see the back is raised and the front goes down. There's the second one. And there's also a third and a fourth. Here's the thing. The third and fourth stops they're not really stops. There's not enough tension. There's not too much tension on the first and second positions either, but there is a bit. Yeah. There's a bit of tension, bit of tension, not too bad, but then three and four, yeah, don't even bother with three and four. It's basically straightforward. One, two. Yeah, three and four, too flimsy. Don't even bother with those positions. This red portion here, that's also plastic. Yeah, as you can see, made in China, and as usual, guys, specs in the description box below. Be sure to check that out when the video is over, but yeah, and this does make an excellent cap light, and what I like about it is it makes a good handheld general purpose light as well. And this is something that's very lightweight. You can toss it into a pack. You can keep this as a loner light. Just works very well in the handheld position or as a cap light, and it won't break the bank. So this one does get a conditional recommendation from me if you're looking for a cap light that can do double duty as a handheld. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Please continue to stay safe out there.